Anybody? Don't miss her so much. All right, Ian. Uh, Mr. Calderon. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was unaware of this issue until Ms. Grove brought this issue to me. I didn't know anything about it. Um, she showed me a very powerful video uh, explaining kind of the the issues that we're seeing in these state hospitals and, and why specifically these two facilities uh, needed to be closed. And we had a conversation specific to closing these facilities. Um, and, and, and since that time, this has been placed into the budget. And it has been taught mentioned by the governor as something that is important for us to look at and important for us to do. And, and I'm glad that that was recognized because clearly there were things happening within these facilities that merit uh, their closure in terms of not only the abuses, but also the amount of money that it costs to, to house a small amount of people with regards to how much money was actually being spent. Um, I have had a conversation with the member that represents this specific area, at least specific to Sonoma, and his concerns were giving them, giving him and the locals the ability to have the time to negotiate with the state to find out what is proper in terms of how they can negotiate the closure of at least specifically the Sonoma facility. I have a state hospital in my district, and I know that I would want the ability to negotiate with my locals along with the state on the closure of that facility. I think that um, moving forward, because this is something that it is in the budget, it is a good point to bring up passing a bill while we're going to be voting on a trailer bill that speaks to directly closing these facilities. Um, and it's because I'm going to be laying off the bill today. However, it needs to be understood and needs to be very clear that had it not been for the advocacy of Ms. Grove, this would not have attracted the attention of the administration. And I don't know, without her advocacy and without her involvement in this issue, um, that we would even be in a position right now where we'd be having these facilities closed when these facilities absolutely 100% need to be closed. I think one thing that we all agree on up here is that these facilities need to be closed. It's just in terms of the timing that we need to negotiate. And I know that as a member, I would want the ability, if it was in my district, to have that time to be able to negotiate that with my locals along with the state. However, I'm going to make the commitment that if it is not negotiated in a way that is sufficient and doesn't bring anything back to the communities, which is a point that has been brought up, that I would like to work specifically with you, Ms. Grove, to make sure that we find a solution that is absolutely uh, viable for the communities and, and protects the patients that are being cared for in these facilities and they are going to have to be moved into other facilities uh, and reintegrated back into um, our communities. So at this time, I will lay off. Uh, however, I don't I want to underscore how important this issue is and how it would not be as uh, big of an issue as it is today had it not been for your advocacy and the governor would not uh, most likely have put it into the budget had you not called attention to the egregious acts that were happening in this facility. So I want to thank you for your advocacy. I want to thank you for your work, uh, that I am supportive of your ideas, and, and that's why I want to be supportive of making sure these facilities close. I want to back you 100% when it comes to that. I do agree that the timeline is a little bit short in terms of being able to find reasonable solutions on how to put, on where to put these uh, uh, individuals that are in these facilities currently, and I do want to show respect to my colleague that represents this area uh, and give him that time to negotiate. Um, but I want to thank you again for all your hard work. You've done a really good job on this. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Um, you. Just, so just to address that issue, the bill does specifically say that the local authority, the supervisors, does have the ability to negotiate the 50% that goes back to the district. So that gave those members the opportunity to have local control, and they could decide and negotiate with the state on that issue. So I address that issue. And then about the concern, my concern is making sure that the people are moved out um, uh, safely. Uh, over the past uh, few years, since 2011, we have moved a 200 
over to an average of 200 people out per year. So if that continues from this point forward, it'll be before the deadline even occurs um, because 200 people have been moved out every year since then. And um, it's all based on their individual plan. And um, when the opposition was up here and they made a statement that these um, are the most vulnerable, they're not being able to place in the community, the statement referencing the people that are left are, are people that can't be placed in the community. Just last month, Han was one of those people, the Swiffer King, right? They said he couldn't be placed in the community, and he lives on his own, and he loves Chips Ahoy cookies. I mean, the guy eats Chips Ahoy cookies like no tomorrow, and he cleans his own house, and like, you know, Jackie said, he's all into Swiffer. And so um, he was one of those people just, what, 56, 57 days ago that wasn't able to be placed in the community. Um, and this did, I tried to make sure that it was thoughtfully thought out, that the members that were in these areas, I didn't want, you know, I would hate for somebody to come in my area and just shut something down. And I have no connection, no family member, nothing. I just fell in love with these people that, anyways. Um, so I did address the members' concerns uh, to let them do what their community wants to do with the properties in negotiation with the state. And, so I, don't that think, was and I don't think that this is in any way, shape, or form about where your heart is on this issue because obviously your heart is in the right place. And I'm acknowledging that. I want to continue to acknowledge that. And although I'll be laying off right now, that doesn't necessarily mean if the bill moves forward that it's not something I want to continue to work with you on Thank because you. I do. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and Vice Chair Mays? Yeah, if it's okay, if I... Um Mr. Stone wanted to speak, if it's okay to yield to you. Um, well, I did have, there's just one point that I wanted to, to make, and I've been a co-author of this, and I want to thank you. You sure mic on? Oh. There you go. I wanted to thank you, uh, Assemblymember Grove, for your hard work on this and your commitment uh, to move this forward. There was some um, conversation about this and working with the consultant on our um, side. There was the Welfare and Institutions Code uh, 4474.1, which the assumption was uh, that this language would be in that bill. Would you be willing to uh, to amend your bill to to, to uh, place this language in, which is the same language that if the department itself was closing something down, would this be language that you'd be willing to to take a look at? Yes, actually, in the the bill itself, in the beginning, if you look at it, it says that it's already in the legislature. It's it's already li existing law requires certain steps to take place, and I just assume that existing law would continue. But if it needs to be put in the bill to make sure, absolutely, there are things. There needs to be an open hearing, at least one. There needs to, in the districts, and they all have to comply. Everybody has to comply with the individual performance or placement evaluation, the individual plan for these individuals that are inside the community. And like I said, we've been moving about 200 per year with the plans in place and they are living fuller uh, better lives in the community and, and it seemed like with the oppositions their argument seems to be um, hung on this idea of a hard and fast date and I know because uh, I've done some government work for some time that when you don't have a hard and fast date to close mm -hmm. it seems like things take a long time and um, it doesn't necessarily get there can you talk about why 2018 is the is the time frame so we closed um, two previous facilities in, um, I think it was eight years and then six years, and, and excuse me, eight years and then four years. So this was three years. Um, and then also after sharing some information with Ann Gus Brown and some others, uh, the administration had adopted it and put it in the state budget, um, which I was really, really pleased to see. So I think with the hard deadline that is there, um, everybody on this dais, I think with the exception of Mr. Stone, will be here for 12 years, um, m m most likely. If there's an issue that needs to be changed and you see that it's not taking place after I'm gone, then fix it. Fix it. And, um, and one more question. We're talking about the budget um, and that the fact that the governor has had this language um, in the, the, the trailer bill moving forward. But doesn't the governor have to sign this bill for it to become, um, for it to become law? He does. He has to sign this bill and, and he has to sign the budget bill that we're supposed to vote on on Monday. And then... Um, uh, it's just, it's, uh, and the governor's budget bill doesn't address the assets and the properties, and they're tremendous assets. Um, we turned um, one specific Camarillo State Hospital into Cal State Channel Islands. Um, there was the comment made that they're worried about, you know, the property in Sonoma. My gosh, can you imagine how valuable that property is in Sonoma in the middle of wine country? Um, and the same thing right in the district um, down south in Costa Mesa. So I don't think there will be an issue with developing properties if the locals choose to do that. 
I think you've done a lot of uh, hard work on this. I think it's been um, uh, well thought out. Um, any piece of legislation, there's going to be issues. That's why we have committee hearings to discuss those. Um, I'm in strong support of this bill. Thank, Thank you for your work. Assemblyman Thurmond, or? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, I want to thank the author, you know, for, you know, I, I know your intent because we've talked about this a great deal in the Subcommittee on Health and Human Services, and I appreciate your commitment to helping our consumers uh, live in the community. Um, I also want to thank the speakers from STEP who spoke today. Uh, thank you for what you do in the community. Um, you know, as you know, Assembly Member Grove, I've been outspoken on the issue of closing the developmental centers because I've worked as a social worker uh, in the community, and I've also worked as a um, supportive living aid uh, in number of capacities, including in living capacity. Um, and so these are issues that are deeply important to me as well. Um, I'm fully in support of the idea of closure of the D.C.s, but as you know, um, there are things in this bill that give me great concern. Um, the, large, the most important thing is that there is not a role for the families of the consumers served to be a part of the process and the discussion for how the closure transition will take place. And that's why through the subcommittee that you're a member of, we've convened a stakeholder group to do just that, to take the language that's going to be in the trailer bill that the governor has proposed for the closure dates to talk about every aspect of how that closure will take place, to talk about, first and foremost, the most important thing, how to make sure we meet the needs of every single consumer, client, person served based on his or her individual program plan. That may require more than two years' time. For some, that may be less than two years' time. But the whole reason that we convene this task force, starting with the Sonoma Developmental Center, was so that we'd have flexibility to go through and look at the needs of each individual consumer served and to help him or her come up with the best plan to support their quality of life. Uh, that stakeholder group has a way for every key stakeholder to be a part of the conversation. Uh, the folks in the Sonoma community, the folks who work in the developmental centers, uh, you know, working closely with the department to first and foremost make sure that every consumer has a way to have a great quality of life. So it, it concerns me that there is not the flexibility in what's outlined in the bill. It concerns me that there is not a place for the stakeholders, most importantly, the consumers to give voice to how this process should take place. So while I support your desire to see the closure of the developmental centers, I think we ought to give the process that we've created. In sub one, we voted, you were a part of that committee, to say that we'd accept the trailer bill language, to move it forward, to close the developmental centers, and we went a step further. We created a stakeholder group to make sure every single group with an interest has the ability to make sure this is a smooth transition for our consumers. And not seeing that flexibility, not seeing that place for the consumers to participate, I, I can't support this bill today. Sorry. Thank you, um, Mr. Thurman. Thank we did you. have a lengthy discussion in Budget Sub 1, and after we had that discussion, I amended this bill not to step on your toes because it was your idea. For, it was in the bill for the task force. It said the bill would create a task force to determine the use of the properties to develop a plan for benefit, benefiting individuals with developmental disabilities in community-based program setting and would require the task force to um, consist of 15 members. And it was, so I went through that. But after that, you had said that you wanted to develop the task force. I amended right. the bill so it wouldn't step on your toes with your task force and I took that out of this bill so I'm sorry that that caused a concern for it, you actually no apology can I uh, it, uh, interrupt just one minute sure, I, I don't think Mr. Thurman had the question oh, so would you actually, restrain your, cons actually, your yeah, comment I, I, at a closing please sure, in, in my statement I did ask I was oh, really okay. getting to the question about involvement for consumers in, and their families in the process it was just and, amended out but but I but I do, it was amended out, I understand. Okay. But, I, but you don't owe me any apology. This isn't about me being concerned about how it gets done. I want what's done to be best for the consumers who are served. We have actually already established a stakeholder process that has its first meeting on July the 8th, and I'm hopeful that you'll participate in it as we had discussed. This is not about, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel that my toes have been stepped on in any okay. way. I just want to make sure there's flexibility and not rigidity in how we approach the timeline and the plan. I, I think it's not a fair statement to say that every single consumer can be moved out in two years. We both know that there are some consumers who are medically fragile and that it's very difficult to find supportive housing 
in some places in the Bay Area because the, the amount of money that some consumers receive through the disability benefits is not enough without being supported in other places to pay what's a commercial rent. I know that directly because I lived, I lived in some of the programs that serve the consumers to support them around the clock. And so I think we need to take as much time as we can to support each consumer. If we can do it quickly, we do it quickly. But if we need more time, we take the time. I don't see the flexibility in this bill to do that, and that's why, sadly, I can't support it today. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, Assemblyman. Member Stone. Yeah. Th thank you. As the chair last session of, of this committee, I had the privilege of sitting on the task force that was looking at the developmental centers, and there was a lot of discussion about what to do with them, and I think that we were generally on a path to close the developmental centers. But without any plan to do so, without any timelines, without any real structure to do that, this bill was introduced and provided some hard deadlines. I'm not sure that these deadlines necessarily are real or should be adhered to, or even that the governors are real or should be adhered to. But this bill, I think, is important in the sense that well, I guess if the governor had put in his January budget what he put in the May revision, we'd be in a very, very different place right now. And I think why this bill is important to move forward, given some, and, and I understand some of the, the concerns that have been raised and some of the structural things have been raised, because to close the developmental centers is going to be a dramatic step. But there are some things that we need to make sure we keep in mind. Number one is that we have a path and that we stick to it. That comes with legislative oversight. That comes with the commitment of everybody here. To abdicate completely to the administration, I'm not sure we would see the progress that we would find acceptable for us now overseeing this because we haven't really seen that much progress in overall closing the developmental centers, which I think we need to do because it's a very hard thing to do. Now, we absolutely have to take care of the employees who are working there. They are skilled and talented people and need a, need a place to go and will be very valuable in our community, in those community, place, those community placements. We need to make sure, which is one of the things that Ms. Grove is trying to do in this bill, ensure that savings money then gets invested in those communities as those placements happen. We need to make sure that there's a vehicle, that there's legislative pressure to do just that through the budget process, through whatever process. Otherwise... As we close these centers, if we don't have quality in-community services for, for people to then move off to, we're going to exacerbate the problem that, that we have, high-quality, in-community, more home-based type settings for a lot of the clients in the developmental centers. That's where they need to go. I think this bill provides enough pressure to ensure that the whole process is going to work and that our stake in the game as the legislature, as the assembly, is that we want to continue to have leverage to ensure that the closures and the process for the closure, closures meets our collective approval, and whether it's the timelines and, and others. I think that's the value of this bill moving forward. Does it conflict with the what's in the, the trailer bill? Yes, it does. Uh, I have a bill right now that conflicts with what's in the, within the budget. That's all fine and good because it still is our ability to say this is what we want to happen. We want to improve on the timelines. So I think the purpose of this bill was to put it out there, put a framework out there, put a hard date. I, I don't expect that there was necessarily an, an expectation that those dates were going to be met. But the fact that the closures happen and the fact that how they happen is as critical. And that's what we need to be very, very mindful of and not step back from our responsibility to ensure that that package happens, that we do have an interest in how that land is, is dealt with. In that's true for all the developmental centers. We do have an interest to make sure a statewide interest that the – all of these clients are taken care of appropriately in their communities and in a way that, that, that the system, the, the regional centers now who will be taking on the responsibility can afford to do that. So we have to make sure that there's enough money for the transition and for the ongoing provision of those services. I'm going to vote for the bill today because I think that leverage is an important part of what we do as, as a legislature. We do have policy bills. We do have budget bills as we move through. 
we can't forget what our responsibility is to this. I'm glad we're seeing all the progress we are, recognition in the governor's budget, task forces and all that. I think from this committee's standpoint, it's still appropriate to say, okay, but let's have multiple vehicles moving to ensure that we have as much pressure as possible. That's how we'll end up getting the results that, we're, that we need. Thank you very much, uh, Assembly Member Thurman. Well, thank you. A quick question to the author. Yes. How many agencies in the community have been identified that will be able to provide the need to those served at Sonoma in 2018? I'm sorry, um, in 2018. And the reason I ask that is I know that when Ag News closed, there needed to be a number of new agencies needed to be created and vendorized to meet those needs. And, you know, I am not aware that that legwork hasn't been done. But if you can comment that or your witness can comment on what agencies have been um, you know, develop and support it and are prepared to meet that need if this rigid timeline is going to be kept to um, what, what work has been done to prepare for that. Because so, I, so I'll reply and then he can add if it's like, but there's already, like I said, 200 people a year being moved out into those institutions and we move them out on a monthly basis as, as we can. And um, there are already um, places in the community that are uh, serving those individuals and um, at a higher quality of life. That's where I just keep wanting to go with you guys. It's just a higher quality of life when they're in the community. And so um, through the process of closure for Ag News in those areas, they did identify where they needed um, to have additional services provided. I don't see this process or this closure any different than that, that um, when Sonoma closes, um, that they would identify places if, if places need to be identified in the same down with Costa Mesa and Fairview. View. It's it's a process that has to take place, and like I said, all of those things were included. Um, I already agreed to accept Mr. Mays's amendments, where um, I just and it was assumption on my part that the same plan and processes that had you been used to close the other facilities, uh, but I guess there's a difference between state shutdown and legislative mandated shutdown. So um, we'll follow the same plan. Uh, we'll institute that language in the bill to show that the same plan closure would be in effect that have been used to close the previous facilities. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would just reiterate the concern that we need to be sure that I agree with you. Quality of life in the community is certainly the best. There's nothing that stops us from helping individuals who are in the development of centers from moving right now when we can identify existing community resources. But at a time when agencies are closing because of rate issues and, and they're, and they're going to need to be more specialized agencies open, I think we should take our time, and I would just reiterate that concern. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assemblymember Lopez. Um, yes, Mr. Mrs. Assemblymember Gorman, I really applaud you for bringing this bill and the table into the, our consideration. The only thing I I just want a clarification: what is that uh, between the governor proposal, the trail bill, and your bill? What is the difference? So the governor's trailer bills, we amended our dates to be at the governor's um, goal <laughs> dates for the closure date. And then so that's uh, it, our date was uh, six months earlier, four months earlier. Um, and then we amended it to equal the, the governor's dates. And the only other difference is, is that we allocate funds. This bill allocates funds or requires funds to go to the community, to support the people moving to the community and to support the community. Um, the community, meaning the individuals living outside in the world with us, the little gentleman that then the gentleman who delivers our mail and works in the mail room here in the building, Richard, who has his own business, Han, who lives in his own house, that just goes to fund their lifestyle um, at, a, at a higher rate because they haven't had an increase. They've had one increase in, I think, 20 years. How long? Uh, 15. 15 years, but then that was taken from them, I think, in 2010. And now there's a proposal on the assembly side to give them 5% now and 5% later. But um, this money would be directed to the community, half of it, and the other half would go back to the general fund budget. So that's the only difference is it allocates the funds for the community. And my other question is, uh, with this bill, do you have any in place to have the plans to transition for the uh, clients? Yes, uh, the the bill requires you have to have an individual per, uh, per plan, personal plan. You have to have a plan, and the plan is designed when there's assessments. They they go and they say, you know, this is this person's issue. They have this issue, and we need to make sure that they're medical, their trach, whatever the issue is, and then they have a plan in place to make sure that those th needs are met in the community. What we found, and what I found over the last four years in this um, venture quest, whatever you want to call it, is um, Thank <laughs> you. 
So we had a guy that was uh, severely, severely behavioral, you know, like he didn't have a lot of medical issues, but he was irate and violent. And, you know, there were serious things and they had to restrain him hundreds of times in a week and tie him down to the bed. And then when we got him out, the only problem that he had is he, he likes the keyboard and he wanted to play piano. And um, when he went to the community room in the developmental center, the piano keys were wrong. So now he's playing in Los Angeles. He plays music. He has three or four keyboards um, to himself. And he doesn't have violent outbursts. But when he went to the community center at the D.C.'s, the keys were missing. So he would get upset and they'd restrain him, have a violent outbreak. It's solving their problem. That's all it is, is solving their problem. And, and I've, I know that I've spent time with you and giving you a series of abuses that have taken place. Um, and I'm not saying that abuse doesn't take place in the community, but in the community, law enforcement comes in and people go to jail and get arrested and um, they get in trouble for hurting people like this. And in the state setting, that doesn't happen. So that's where my heart is, is to fix that. Maybe another one. Um, who is responsible for the plan for the clients? So, Mr. Mays, just ask, pardon me? Yeah. So the regional centers um, are responsible for the plan, and Mr. Mays just asked me to make sure that I amended the bill to put that language in to make sure that oh. DDS, um, D the DDS qualifications for closing the facilities and working with the community centers are in instituted the language is in put in the plan. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Yeah, yeah, just if, if I can... Um, seems like this has become a bipartisan um, bill, uh, and I know that um, a couple members are having a couple of issues uh, with, with a few things, and it, this still has to get approved in our House, move over to the Senate side, and there's still time for amendments. I'm just wondering what we can do to be able to get there. The one thing I can tell you, and I'm going to um, vent here for a moment, but one thing that's been frustrating to me being here in this House, and I'm just a freshman. Uh, but what's been difficult is that we've had these committee processes and yet very little debate. This has been the most discussion that I've seen in committee. And it seems like the time to work these things out is right here and right now. So if there's concerns that we have, let's see what we can do to try to get there, um, to get this uh, across, the, uh, across the desk and get over to the other side. So I'm just wondering if, uh, with the other members here, if it's appropriate, are there some things specifically that you think that, you, that could be placed in here that would get you there to, to, to get your support? And, and just to address, Mr. Chairman, just to address, and he said it's a bipartisan issue, or excuse me, a partisan issue. Mr. Stone is a co-author, so. No, no, I meant bipartisan, this is bipartisan. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I apologize. Any additional comments from my colleague? No? All right. I, I, I just wanted to say I, I really uh, want to detail what um, Assembly Member Calderon has, uh, has said. I don't want to really want to repeat you know, verbatimly, word by word, but I definitely I agree with, uh, with his comment 100%. Uh, I just wanted to add my appreciation to, to you, uh, Assemblymember Grove, for your passion. You know, I, we, we have the discussion on this bill for many, many times, uh, and, and, and your passion almost moved me to vote it to, in support of the bill. <clears throat> so I want to thank you very much. But looking at... The, the, the drop that date for closing of this uh, center, uh, as well as uh, not being able to uh, have uh, stakeholders and public hearing to, to, to get input from, from all other uh, stakeholders and the concerned community member. Uh, if we move me back a little bit to a, a, new, a more neutral position, um, and, and uh, I, I do agree with uh, um, Assemblymember Thurman that we have a, a responsibility to make sure that the progress, um, as we, you know, whether this bill passed, this, this committee, or the accountability and administrative review committee, we do have the uh, responsibility to continue monitoring the, the, the progress to, to make sure that. Um, what the outcome is, is best for everybody, you know, including the clients. So thank you very much. I will be uh, an, an not voting on this bill for today. I just uh, wanted to make it out. So without any further questions and comments, um, th 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 there's a motion to uh, do pass to uh, with the amendment. Yeah, as amended. Do pass as amended. 
to some uh, accountability and administrative review committee. Sorry. May I ask? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't give our assembly member an opportunity to close. Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I tried to address um, everybody's issues that we had, and um, that's a tough thing to do, is to address, especially on an issue that um, means a lot. So, um, and I'm sorry, I just, um, most of you watch the video in Jennifer's room, and it, um, it still grieves my heart that women could be being raped on that wing that is decertified every night. And um, so that bothers me. I, uh, I appreciate Mr. Thurman's comments about the task force. Immediately when he brought the task force up in committee, I went back to my office and I said, we've got to take the task force out of the bill. Um, that's Thurman's idea, let him have the task force. And then hopefully that would solve that problem. Mr. Dodd met with me and said he had an issue with um, not being able to address or have the, um, the property dealt with at a local level. So we put that in the bill to make sure that um, that was done, but still allowed funding to go to the community. So I do appreciate all your comments. I appreciate you guys listening to the stories and um, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Clerk, would you please call the roll? Motion um, AB 1405, Assemblymember Grove. Motion is due pass as amended to Accountability and Administrative Re Review Committee. Two. Oh, okay. Two not voting. Mays? Yes. Aye. Mays, aye. Calderon? Absent. Calderon not voting. Lopez? Aye. Lopez, aye. Mainshine? Stone? Thurman? Not voting. Thurman not voting. Bill has two. Votes. It needs two more. So the bill is out. Can we put yeah, the? It's got no. two. It needs two more votes. Can we put the bill on call? So all right. Thank you very much. Can we'll, we put the bill on call? It's on call. Sure. The bill will be on call for. Uh, we get two, more two, two, twenty, to five minutes, or we we get ten minutes. Is that fair? Yeah. Or you want it to be be on call? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll put it on call for ten minutes. And, and waiting for the other members to, to show up. Thank you very much. So 10 minutes. Shine here. Okay, do I need to use one? Yeah. All right, I'm going to lift the call on AB 1405 with two additional members here. Mainshine? Aye. Mainshine? Aye. Stone? Aye. Stone? Aye. The bill okay. is out. All right, the vote is out. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At this point, I'm going to join. All right. All right, so meeting is adjourned.